into the garbage chute, fly boy. This is a rebellion, isn't it? I call it aggressive negotiations. The garbage will do! Welcome to this week's Trash Compactor podcast, Star Wars from a Certain Point of View. I'm MC. I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be talking about The Mandalorian. So we've got three episodes out so far. We didn't get the chance to talk about it last week when it was still fresh and new, but it's still, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. And the third episode is still fresh and new right now, so. The third episode is fresh and new, yes. We're still close. It just went up yesterday, so um, we're just going to be talking about our feelings about this first live action star wars show which i just i'm s- still amazed that we have live action star I wars know. tv that was gonna be the first thing i said is holy shit we have live action star wars on television yeah like they've been talking about this for years i think it was back like not long after the prequels they were talking about doing a live action series yeah i know it had been a long time i didn't realize it was that long wow definitely before george sold it now they're doing it and they're doing it like really well like i watch the mandalorian and i see very little difference between it and the movies (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of like little mini movies, sort of. Very mini movies. Very mini movies. That's why I hesitated in saying it that way. I I was surprised by the length of the episodes. Not complaining. Um, I mean, like the the first one, it took me by surprise because I didn't really pay attention to like how, you know, it says how long the episode is on it. I didn't pay attention to that. So when I was watching, I was like, oh, that was that was it like how long was that like i literally had no idea how long it had been i just knew that it was very short okay see and i was watching it before i try to watch them before i go into work because spoilers Mm -hmm. and i look at the time just to make sure that i've got the time fair fair oh wow that's short and then i got to the end of the first episode and went well it certainly didn't feel that short well i mean it didn't feel short to me it's like It felt as long as it needed to be. Yeah, it doesn't, nothing felt extraneous. Which I think is probably what they're doing with this, is that they don't want to have any padding in it. Mm -hmm. And I think they're doing a good job with that. And also, if you look at our main characters, it's very hard to find stuff for them to do that would not seem extraneous. Like, you can't have, like, a long deep conversation with the Mandalorian and baby Yoda. Like that's not going to happen. He doesn't talk a lot. No, I do like the very long silences between them though. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I like, I like those too, but it, it's, you can't really carry that on for too long. Right. It's a problem with having a mysterious main character who, you know, a man of few words, but that's not a bad thing. That proves that this show belongs on this type of format the streaming format where they're not beholden to episode length like everybody thinks with episode you know not being beholden to episode lengths means like oh we can go on for you know an hour and 10 minutes it works the opposite also this it's like we're just gonna get in get out do what we have to do and Mm -hmm. it works really well i have not been disappointed by any of the episodes so far no not at all they call them chapters and it's like each of these is a chapter in Mm -hmm. the story of the mandalorian and each chapter is one event that happens so it's not really okay so we're gonna have this one where he goes and rescues baby yoda from the imperials and that's all it has to be so we're not going to carry it on to anything else right there's no b plots or c plots it is just plot yeah and story and it's great that way i definitely think this show could not be on television well first of all i mean they they couldn't afford it on tv and also i don't think that it would work in the hour-long format no it really really wouldn't and i mean while the episodes have been coming up on i think the last one was 39 that's not to say that later on they're not going to have longer episodes once we get deeper into the plot like the final episode might be an hour and a half we don't know yeah we'll find out when it happens yeah things might change once more characters come into it because Mm -hmm. right now it's basically the mandalorian and baby yoda 
but we still need to meet Cara Dune, who I believe is coming in in the next episode. Okay. I heard she's going to be, like, her first appearance is in Bryce Dallas Howard's episode, and I think that was, I think that's episode four. Okay, see, I haven't been paying that close attention. I just know all these characters are coming. For me, it's going to be an absolute surprise when they do pop up. I haven't paid that much attention. It's only been, like, little bits of things that, you know, I, I've heard from various places. Okay. So. But anyway, so uh, the basic plot of The Mandalorian, which I'm sure, you know, spoil... I am mean, we've already been talking about spoilers, so... At this point, is Baby Yoda really a spoiler? I mean, the official Star Wars account has tweeted pictures of Baby Yoda. It's been over a week. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. I, I think if you're interested in The Mandalorian, you have to have found it somewhere at this point. And if that means pirating it, that's... No, we are not saying it's okay to pirate things. We just know that this is how the world works. I do pay for my Disney Plus account. Me too. But for people in other countries where it's not available, I would understand mm -hmm. if they were to seek out this show in alternative means. Yep. I, I mean, like, we're Doctor Who fans. <laughs> we, we know how... We know how this works. There was a time when it was not simulcast. <laughs> Happy Doctor Who Day, by the way, even though this episode won't come out on Doctor Who Day. What's Doctor Who Day? It's the 56th anniversary of oh, Doctor it's Who. The fifth oh, okay. Happy birthday, Doctor Who. Okay, Yay. back to Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. But so the plot is the Mandalorian, who we still don't officially have a name for. Right. Is a bounty hunter who ends up taking a job with an imperial remnant to get an asset for them and we find out at the end of the first episode that this asset is a baby yoda a 50 year old baby yoda who i have heard go by all kinds of awesome nicknames there's so many names i mean the most common is baby yoda because it right that's what the most common thing it's the most common is. one but then you get people who are like well yoda's already been dead for five years so it's not baby yoda but we don't know the name of his species i've so been joking we call him a baby yoda species baby yoda species there's yeah. that I believe there is a Reddit, a subreddit called Yiddle. Yep, I've heard that on a couple places. Over on Sky Talkers, they call him Yanni. So yeah, people are kind of calling Baby Yoda whatever they want. There's a lot of different names, usually something starting with Y. Yep. I've also heard Yannikin. Oh, that's terrible. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> no, I'm going to pretend I didn't heard that one. <laughs> Lots of names, lots of theories regarding little baby Yoda. The show has basically been the Mandalorian and this little baby Yoda. First him trying to get it to the people who have the bounty out on him mm -hmm. and then rescuing the baby. That was awesome. And now he's going to be on the run with baby Yoda. I was very hesitant about the whole concept of the show in the first place because I'm not a huge fan of the Mandalorians. It's like I like them okay. But it's like, it, okay, so the show's called The Mandalorian. Is it Sabine Wren? Uh, okay, I don't care then. <laughs> yeah, I think my first reaction to it was, well, that was a lot better than I expected. Or yeah. no, I liked it a lot more than I expected. Because I expected it to be great. I just didn't expect to like it. And I really like it. Yeah, I was worried because it's like, okay, a Mandalorian that's a bounty hunter. So it's Boba Fett without being Boba Fett, and I really don't care for Boba Fett. Right. But completely exceeded my expectations, mm -hmm. and I am, like, on the edge of my seat for each episode. I could definitely see, like, the little shades of Boba Fett in there. Like, obviously Mandalorian bounty hunter, and he's got a lot of, like, the little toys that Boba Fett has, including... I love all of the references to the Star Wars Holiday Special. I knew you were going to love those. So that was just joy right there. Does that make the Holiday Special canon? The Holiday Special, I think, is semi-canon. All right, so it's still semi-canon. Yeah. Okay. Like, they, they keep on dancing around it, but we know, like, B. Arthur's character is canon. We've got the the rifle mm -hmm. of the Mandalorian rifle. We, Life Day is now Day. officially canon. Chewie's family is canon. So so basically it's canon. Basically it's canon. I think the only thing that's not going to be canon is Chewie's father watching holographic porn in the living room. Okay, that's fair. 
I think we can excuse that one. But yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that kind of on the surface makes this guy seem like he could be like an XP of Boba Fett. But then when you actually look at him and he's like, no, he's actually very different. Like he does seem to have a deep moral code. His own moral code. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not sure he knows what it is. Yeah. But he'll do what he feels is right in that moment. He is, and this is something that separates him from from Boba Fett. He's definitely a Mandalorian. Boba Fett, I always kind of got the impression that he wasn't really a Mandalorian. He was somebody who was kind of fronting as a Mandalorian. Okay. And I, I think that is actually canonical that Jango Fett wore the Mandalorian armor, but the Mandalorians were like, yeah, we don't know him. Huh. Now I got to look at that because I don't know if that's canon or if that's Legends canon. It, it might be a mix of both. Okay. But like Django and Boba Fett were never really that honorable. And like the Mandalorians, like they have this honor code. It's their honor code. It might not make sense to the rest of the galaxy, but it makes sense to them. The, the Mandalorian, the, the title character of the show, the, the Pedro Pascal character, he's definitely like very invested in foundlings. Mm -hmm. because he was one and i've seen a lot of people very confused as to what he's talking about when he says foundling and i'm like an orphan yeah i was like i was not confused at all by that okay no see i can see where some of the confusion comes from because i question whether he's actually mandalorian then or a foundling means maybe the mandalorians rescued orphans from the clone wars well i i think that a mandalorian foundling is their orphans who are brought into the mandalorian culture right but not mandalorian by blood so there's i say they're still mandalorian but not mandal not uh, a blood mandalorian. right but that's what i mean by i can see where some of the confusion comes from i mean it's definitely a child that was found and raised by the community that's a good way to swell your ranks, especially at this time in the galaxy. I mean, there's got to be a lot of war orphans because the galaxy's been at war for, at this point, what, like 40 years? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, a lot of people been killed. And the Mandalorian looks like to have been orphaned by the Separatists. Mm -hmm. Does not like droids all that much. I can't blame him. Is kind of like her from uh, a certain point of view. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking that when I saw it for the first time. They'd probably get along great. Okay, sorry. I'm off in my own little world now. I just started writing a story in my head where they're secretly brothers. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> but yeah, so the Mandalorian does not like droids. He does like foundlings. He does like foundlings. Uh, but not in a weird way. Which makes like the whole Baby Yoda thing, that's, it makes total sense. If yep. he's, you know, very invested in foundlings. Mm -hmm. And it is my dream that Baby Yoda will become a Mandalorian. Oh, that would be awesome. How would his ears fit in the helmet? I drew a picture of it. It's on, it's on my Twitter. Okay, I'll have to look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll reblog it when okay. we uh, post this episode up. But yeah, awesome. I, I mean, like Mandalorian armor is made custom for every Mandalorian. So that would be funny looking armor, though. Well, yeah, but I think the armorer could handle it. Yes. The armorer is awesome. I love the armorer. I adore her. I was so shocked to find out she is a supernatural alumnus. Oh, okay. Yeah, she played God's sister. Nice. I'm not ex <laughs> that's actually what her role is. It's like I knew I recognized the voice, which is hard to do because, you know, they have the Mandalorian, like, overlay. Yeah, uh, but then I saw an interview with her, and then I was like, wait a second, that's Amara. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and it's very cool. I like that it makes sense to me that kind of, like, she seems to be almost like the spiritual leader of the Mandalorians, and it's like very much in charge. It makes sense to me that their blacksmith <laughs> would be in charge. Yeah, no, it does, especially considering how much they respect the armor. Like, the armor is their... I really just want to say, is their thing? And that's so not how I want to put it. But that is their, that's how everyone knows them. That's how they see themselves. It's their history. It's their future. Yeah, well, they talk in the third episode about, has have you ever taken off your mask, or your helmet, or has anybody taken it off? It seems like it's a really big deal for mm -hmm. them to remove their helmet, which means I'm really waiting for the moment where it does happen. Yeah, Because seriously. you know it is. 
See, it also makes me wonder what changed between, well, I guess the last time we see Mandalorians is Rebels. Yeah. What has changed between Rebels and post-Empire? We we have been getting mentions of this purge that happened, Mm -hmm. which I would guess would have happened between Rebels and this point, which I'm just, what is it, nine years between this and Rebels? Something like that. This is five years after Return of the Jedi, and Rebels ended, like, roughly a year before Star Wars. It's some amount of time that's not huge. And Sabine took her helmet off all the time. She did. And she was most definitely Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. So what changed in between those two points? And I can't wait to find out. Yeah, and it seemed like within that time, like, the Mandalorians have been decimated. Like, there's very few of them left, and they're all underground. And the Empire also melted down their armor to turn it into money. Yeah, these silly little blocks of money that they stamp the Empire symbol in. That they store in ice cream makers, and oh my god. Oh, I I love love the- oh my god, I laughed so hard at the ice cream maker. (laughs) And it just- it- explains things so well yeah because there was that guy in empire and everybody's like why is he running around with an ice cream maker and now it makes sense it was his safe or his piggy bank or something (laughs) i was just i that made me so happy i'm surprised i didn't wake everyone in my house up with my (laughs) laughter on that as i understand it john favreau had actually tweeted it before the third episode came out and I did not see it, and I'm so glad I didn't. I didn't it, either. It was it was just like, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, that was, was that it, was amazing. Will Rod Hood is the name of the guy from Empire. Yep, something like that. It it, it it a boon to cosplayers because it allows a lot more of them to carry around the. I kind of want to go buy an ice cream maker now. I so do I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Black Friday is coming up. Maybe somewhere I'll have them cheap. I think they're act- they're only like 30 bucks or something, which I mean is not yeah. cheap, but That's it's not, not bad for a costume piece. I guess I know what my backpack's going to be for celebration. <laughs> right. Anyway. So yeah, the Mandalorians have definitely gone through this massive change. And one thing I noticed in the latest episode is the Mandalorian that was giving the Mandalorian trouble. We're going to say Mandalorian a lot in this episode. Yeah, we kind of are. But the one that was giving him trouble was voiced by John Favreau. Oh, that's right. And he had previously voiced a Mandalorian on the Clone Wars, right? Yes. Uh, Pre Vizsla. Oh, he, okay, that's right. Yeah, he voiced Pre Vizsla in the Clone Wars, and in the Mandalorian, I can't remember the first name. I want to say Kaz, but it's not Kaz because I've been watch- I've been watching Resistance. Was oh Paz Vizsla? That's the name of his character. Oh, in the okay, I did not catch that. Yeah, John Favreau is playing some sort of relative of his Clone Wars character. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna guess son. Probably the the ages work out, or nephew, or yeah. Some sort of, you know, like one generation right off. I like references to anything. I'm a reference whore. <laughs> yeah, the the little references are great. Because if you catch them, they just add so much. And if you don't, you're not missing anything. All right, so can we talk about IG-11 a little? We can talk about IG-11 a little. Because I am so sad that he's currently dead. And I really hope he's not staying that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, like, he's a droid, like... I don't think shooting him in the head is... I mean, I think it can, like, take him out for a little bit, but maybe not kill him completely. I don't know, because K2 stayed dead. And he was dead before Scarif blew up, so... Well, he was incapacitated. They might have been able to fix him. I don't know. Right, but it's just... There's now a history of droids who stay dead when they get shot. But I loved IG-11. There was so much build-up to him. IG-11 was great. He was just so much fun. I loved seeing how he moved. When you see IG-88 in Empire, he's just standing there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how is this thing a competent bounty hunter? And then seeing IG-11 
G11 and the amazing way that he moves around and fights. I just question your use of competent in regards to IG11, considering he keeps threatening to self-destruct. And I'm not sure how competent anyone who threatens to self-destruct regularly is. <laughs> well, I mean, I identify with that so much. Come on, like, every time something happens to me, it's like, okay, now it's time to self-destruct. <laughs> yeah, but his movements were definitely competent. There is one scene where he's, like, walking over a body that he's just taken out, and he, he does, like, this cool swivel. It's an excellent move. I, I just, who, whoever, like, actually, like, came up with the movements, I think, really needs to be applauded because that's definitely a creative way to have that droid move. Yeah, and I love that we're still getting such different types of droids. You know, we've gotten the snarky ones, we've gotten the angry ones, we've gotten the sweet ones, and we're still getting unique droid personalities, which is awesome. Yeah, I would definitely like to see him come back. This show is very interesting in that we don't have that big of a cast. We don't have a lot of recurring characters so far. Like, IG-11 only appeared in the first episode. Right. And, but they made a huge deal out of him. Yeah, which is why I keep hoping he'll come back. And Nick Nolte's Ugnaught. Quill. Quill? 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 Or, I don't See, know. I kept sure. hearing it as Quill, Q-U-I-L-L. -L, and I know that's not right. <laughs> he was great. Another thing I was not really expecting, I was just like, a Nugnaught? Really? Yeah. This series is definitely going back to the classic Star Wars, like in terms of what they're they're pulling out. Like we have not really seen any of the creatures that were developed for the sequel trilogy. It's a lot of stuff from Empire, some Jedi stuff. And I think, I can't remember who was talking about it, but some commentator said that John Favreau treated this show kind of like him playing with Star Wars toys when he was a little kid. It kind of feels like that. And, and so that kind of explains like having IG-11 and an Ugnaught appear. It's like, so John Favreau had like an Ugnaught toy and IG-88. It also explains the Blurg scene where you just take your action figures and toss them on an animal to ride and they keep falling off. <laughs> No, you're right. That's exactly what it feels like, is playing with your toys. It's great. And not in a bad way. Like, it makes you feel all nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Well, we've talked a little bit about Baby Yoda, because, like, I mean, Baby Yoda is a huge part of the show. Mm -hmm. and, and I already warned you when we were going to be doing this episode, I was like, I'm going to be gushing about Baby Yoda. I know. Go ahead, gush. That is the cutest spoiler I have ever seen. That is, I think, what really got me, like, super interested in the show. Like, I mean, I enjoyed the first episode, but it was that last shot when they showed Baby Yoda. And I'm like, oh my god, I absolutely need the next episode, like, right now. Okay, so I wish I could agree. Not that he isn't cute, because he really is the cutest thing. I don't like children or babies, so he's a very <laughs> cute thing that I don't like. Oh. No, I mean, I, I don't know how to put that differently. He's adorable. I want to see more. I am absurdly curious about where it's going. But it's still a baby. And I want to know how Baby Yoda ties into the rest of the Star Wars universe. Yeah, but that's kind of it. When they said that the bounty was 50 years old, did you know that it was going to be Jedi related? No, I didn't even, I was too tired to even try to math anything i wasn't quite right on the math for it i thought that it might be like clone wars era so i'm like oh this is gonna be something to do with the jedi but it's a little bit earlier than that and i mean it still is related to the jedi somehow somehow but yes i love baby yoda i think baby yoda is super cute the show makes a lot more sense to me now because when I first started watching it i was like okay this kind of has some trappings of a western but it doesn't seem that much like a western if that makes any sense yeah no it does then after the episode aired and people were talking about it a lot of people were bringing up the manga slash movie series lone wolf and cub yep which i guess john favreau actually did take inspiration from so all of the people who are bringing it up it's like yes you are very much right mm -hmm. This is where it comes from. And actually, the the show makes a lot more sense to me, where it's like, oh, okay, so more samurai, but with a Western overlay, which is not new at all. I mean, so many things have 
originated as Japanese media and like just gotten like a, a Western paint on top of it. And that's not even a first for Star Wars. No, that's... And I love Westerns. I like Westerns sometimes. Okay, no, see, I actually like Westerns, so... It depends on the Western. I think I was sold on the show when I heard the music. The music is fantastic. And just like, oh, it's Star Wars doing a Western and it's got Western music. I am happy. Everything else has just been bonus. I have seen, I mean, this was a troll, this specifically trying to be a troll, but saying, it's like, I wonder how people are going to feel about Kylo Ren when they find out that Baby Yoda was a student at Luke's school. <laughs> that made me so angry. I was wondering if Baby Yoda would have been a student. I actually crossed my mind recently. I have a theory. Okay. My number one theory is that Baby Yoda's not going to become a Jedi because Baby Yoda's going to become a Mandalorian instead. You're going to be a Mandalorian Jedi. I could be, but the Mandalorians traditionally... Uh, they've Current canon, not legends. But I mean, even in current canon, like we... they, they, they stayed fa fairly separate. With some very big exceptions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Baby Yoda ending up with the Darksaber? Baby Yoda ending... I would be here for that. Me too. It just occurred to me. I'm now sold. I have my head canon. We're done now. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I had another idea. Okay. So if Baby Yoda needs to be protected, raised with some Mandalorian upbringing, and trained to be a Jedi, where could Baby Yoda end up? Where? Huh. Let me think. Is there any ship that has a Jedi on it and a Mandalorian? I don't know. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dave Filoni is deeply involved in this show. Hmm. I still don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> and he's been very secretive as to what's happened with Ezra Bridger. Hmm. Maybe out in the unknown regions a bit? Anyways, yes. Yeah. So I could totally see Baby Yoda ending up a student of Ezra's rather than Luke's. Which is not to say that he would be safe from Kylo Ren, because we still have no idea about that. But also, he'd be safe from Kylo Ren, because there's no way Ezra and Baby Yoda are going to be taken up by Kylo Ren. Not going to happen. Nope. Well, especially if Ahsoka and Sabine are going after Ezra. I mean, we don't have a timing on that. We don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. I mean, at this point, it could have happened. It could have, or it could still be going to happen. Be oh my god, future tense is awful. Future past tense. <laughs> but yeah, the, Baby Yoda could end up on a ship with Ahsoka. And Ezra and Sabine. That would be like the perfect place. I'd be good on that too, yeah. And I don't know, maybe the Mandalorian knows Sabine. Maybe. We don't know he doesn't. And I mean, like, there's not a lot of Mandalorians, but you gotta believe that Sabine Wren is one of those freaking Mandalorians that's still around. There is absolutely no reason why she isn't. So, this is the third episode that's aired. Right. And by the way, throughout this entire episode, I was so mad at the Mandalorian. Oh. I was yelling at my my TV at, at two in the morning. For cause... leaving Baby Yoda there? Yes. See, I knew as soon as he left him there that he was coming back. But I didn't know when he was coming back. No, like, see, I didn't. I just, I spent the rest of the episode waiting for it. I didn't know if it was going to be at the end of the episode or if they were going to wait until, if he was going to feel like super guilty, go have some more adventures and then come back. Okay. Yeah, but we both knew he was coming back. Yeah, I mean, I knew he was coming back, but I was like, oh, you better go back. You better go back. I don't want to be angry with you, like, for more episodes. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure his inner voice was saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like Mandalorian. Yeah. So I was really mad at him, but I was very happy that he did go back and get him. And now he's got so many people against him. The rest of the Bounty Hunters Guild is going to come after him now. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's, that's really, like, raising the stakes on this. Mm -hmm. Though I think the third episode is the first time there was anything in it that I was really like, oh, I don't like that. I hated the bit at the end where Paz Vizsla jetpacked up to the ship and, like, gave him the salute. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I thought it was kind of silly. It was so cheesy. I think it was just reminding us that Mandalorians have jetpacks. Except for the Mandalorian, because he's like, I gotta get me one of those. Right, which is the same thing Ezra would say. And I bet he uses it about as well as Ezra does. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he can't have one. <laughs> so this is the third episode, so we've got five more, because I think it's an eight episode series. Right. 
what do you think is going to be happening from here on out? Other than the Mandalorian being on the run with a baby and being chased by the rest of the bounty hunters? I have no idea. I think we'll find out, hopefully find out some more of what's going on with Baby Yoda. And like I said earlier, how it ties into the rest of the universe. That's what I really want to know. I'd like to know more of his backstory, other than those little flashes we keep getting. I think that's kind of it. I think, unless I'm really surprised, that's basically the arc of the season. It's just the specifics that we're going to find out. We still haven't gotten Cara Dune or uh, Fennec Shand. Right. Who are, they're not bounty hunters, but... Uh, Fennec Shand is an assassin and Cara Dune is a mercenary, which are slightly different things, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're not going to be after the Mandalorian, but... They'll either be after him or they'll be helping him. Or both. Or both. We also haven't got Giancarlo Ex Esposito's character of Moff Gideon. Oh, that's true. Huh. Okay. So we've got a lot of characters to jam into five more episodes. Werner Herzog is not gone. Oh, gosh, no. Not at all. Neither is uh, Dr. Parashag. Right. We got to find out more about what his deal is. Like, I mean, why is he wearing the Kamino symbol? And just what do they want with Baby Yoda? Other than to clone him, since you just reminded me he's wearing the Kamino symbol. The, the general consensus in terms of theorizing is that they're either trying to clone him or he's already a clone. Okay. Yeah, one or the other. You know, mentioning how this ties to the greater canon like is this part of the emperor's plan ah that's true also obviously the yoda species is naturally force sensitive i think we've had enough examples of like every single member of the species we have seen has been force sensitive all two of them well three of them now well all three yeah but before that it was all two of them well yeah more if you fold in legends which i know we shouldn't no we shouldn't but it is also there that's true. And especially when you're talking about, since this is a Dave Filoni thing, and Dave Filoni does tend to stick with George Lucas's original plan for things, mm -hmm. I get the feeling with Yoda's species, they're not going to stray from George's original intent with them. Yeah, no, that's that's true. So I think that they are just a naturally Force-sensitive species, and they're a very long-lived species, too. Mm-hmm. So this seems like a good species for Darth Sidious to study, to try to extend his life. Yep. Makes sense to me. I could definitely see this having something to do with Darth Sidious' plan to come back. Very interested to see where this is going. I'm a lot more interested in it than I thought it was going to be. I did not think I was going to wake up Friday mornings and go... Do I have enough time to watch? Since I stay up much later than you do, I've been watching the episode as soon as they go up. What time do they actually go up? It apparently depends on where you are. Okay. Where I am, they tend to go up around 1.30. Oh yeah, no, I'm long asleep by then. I usually watch at about 6 a.m. I would totally do that if I was still working a day job. But as I've not been, I've been staying up later doing stuff. And so I'll like do things and be like, it's about 1.30. Let me go check to see if Mandalorian's gone up. Cool. But it, it has varied depending on where you are. And even like what system you're using. Like I use Apple TV, but I've heard some people who like access it off of PlayStation or mm -hmm. whatever that it, it's turned up differently. So okay, it's like all over the place. Generally, people have been waking up early to watch it. Okay. Whenever I watch it late, I don't post anything on Twitter. I did not post any Baby Yoda stuff until after episode two had aired. I don't think I have yet, just because I'm spoiler obsessive a little bit. Also, just because of exhaustion and I've been off Twitter for a while. Uh, if I do post anything, I tend to hashtag Mandalorian. Okay. Or the Mandalorian. So, I mean, like, if you didn't want to know anything about it, then... Easy enough to block it. If you didn't want to know about it, then you better have it muted at this point. So if anybody who didn't want to see it has seen it, then that's your own fault for not <laughs> muting stuff. But, like, when I talked about it over on MCCs, I did not have any spoilery image. I just used the logo rather than anything from the episode. Because that's what you gotta do when you're trying to keep people from being spoiled because obviously i have talked before about not wanting to be spoiled for various things and i don't want to spoil things for other people but yeah i am definitely looking forward to this next episode we get to watch it together i know i just realized that actually <laughs> while you were talking i realized that 
That'll be exciting. Which means if you wake up earlier than me on Friday morning, you gotta, like, either wake me up or wait. Okay. I guess I can do that. Sarah and I are both going to a Doctor Who convention, which is our second mention of Doctor Who in this episode. We're going to try to be recording something live while we're together because it happens so rarely and this episode's going out before ct right yeah this episode's going up on monday all right so if any of our listeners are at chicago tardis we are doing the star wars panel yes on saturday at six i believe I, i believe you are right i can't believe i remembered that and if you are there come say hi to us come to our panel come say hello we'd love to meet y'all in person yes it is saturday at six programming three so if any of you are there that is where you can find us yes and i will have trash compactor ribbons for anybody who would like them i will have trash compactor ribbons if mc has any extras to give to me to give out Uh, uh, other otherwise i will have trash compactor ribbons as well otherwise i think i will have other random star wars ribbons to give out too yes but definitely we would like to see people talk to us that's what we do at doctor who conventions we talk about star wars that is become our thing and if you're not at the panel and are at the convention just look for the two people at the doctor who con talking about star wars that'll be us come up to us and say so about star wars and we'll know where you're coming from exactly either that or you'll be ken who is our friend who always comes up to us and says that that too all right. We'll record something while we're together, probably another video like we did for Star Wars Celebration. It won't update us to what we're doing at the con because we won't be doing Star Wars stuff. But No, but we've also got a couple ideas for episodes we can record while we're there. So we'll see what happens. We do want to record while we're together yeah. because we do get into long Star Wars discussions. And both of us converse better when we can see each other gesturing at things. Yes. So until next time, contact us. Tell us what you think of The Mandalorian. Tell us if you're going to be at Chicago Tardis so that we can look out for you while you look out for us. Uh, You can contact us on Twitter. We're SW Trash Podcast. And I am MC Frodus on Twitter. And I'm Murnell. You can also contact us through our website, which is uh, trashcompactorpodcast.com. And we're on YouTube and Facebook and Tumblr at the Trash Compactor Podcast. And if you want to get more episodes out of us, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's as little as a dollar a month and you can get more Star Wars content because we would really like to talk more about Star Wars. <laughs> Imagine me nodding vigorously. <laughs> so until next time, may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>